My sixth, sixth um, Mother's Day reading. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> 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 so I did it. What should I do this poem? Um, people say, I, I hear this over and over again, that people have like a, everyone, a feminine side and a masculine side. And I thought, how does this work? Okay, fine. And I thought, well, what is my masculine side? I don't understand what that is. It feel, all feels like a feminine side to me. So uh, I thought, well, I was trying to figure out what they meant. And I, it seems like what they mean is my masculine side is like when I'm strong and courageous and fierce. And um, Pretty much the feminine side. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm, I had read this before, a, a version of this from Marianne Williamson about um, fierce women, fierce mothers. There is no serious discussion of rising female consciousness without allowing for one of the most basic feminine principles, the fierce mother in every woman. Not every woman feels moved to have a child, to be sure, but every woman has within her a natural proclivity to protect children. It's a universal concern that's been fostered by millions of years of evolution, ensuring the survival of our species. In fact, in every advanced mammalian species that survives and thrives, a common anthropological characteristic is the fierce behavior of the adult female when she senses a threat to her cubs. Think of the lioness, the tigress, and the mama bear if she sees you near her cubs. Among the hyenas, in fact, a female dominant species, the adult females encircles the cubs while they're eating and will not let the adult males get anywhere near the food until the babies have been fed. So why, if we as individuals, we are so caring, are we so relatively complacent as a group? 17,000 children starve on this planet every single day, mainly in sub-Saharan Africa. One in five American children live in poverty and are food insecure. Yet while the suffering of one child would be unbearable for us to look at, the suffering of millions is sometimes easier to ignore. It's an odd psychological phenomenon, probably created by the fact that it's relatively new in human history that people would even know about such numbers. Few people 200 years ago had heard about the suffering of thousands of people at, at a time because they had no internet or television to tell them about it. One of our most important next steps in our evolutionary journey then is a collective sensibility among women that every child on the earth is one of our children, just as the earth itself is home to all of us. This awakening will change everything, from our economic systems to our political systems. Because the care and protection of our children will finally get the primacy it deserves as a value that should be placed above all other considerations. Surely as women, we can do better than the hyenas. I hope and I think we will. Then. <clears throat> I'm, also bringing, I'm also bringing back a parable for Mother's Day. This was the f first Mother's Day. It's a, um, it's, actually, I got it from some, a friend of mine. And when we were living in Germany, she was American. And it came from her family. But I've, it's, it's gone around the internet many times. So, oh, I just want to add that um, I feel really blessed to have a mother who went from unconditional love for my mother. I always felt like if I murdered someone, she would still love me. And, I, and uh, I, now as an adult, I realize that a lot of people don't have that love and it's just so important. It's, it's, what, it's something I treasure, like that's, that's my deepest treasure, is my mother's love. It's been 20, this is 20th Mother's Day without her. Okay, it's called A, Par A Parable for Mothers and I have some copies. Um, okay. The young mother set her foot on the path of life. Is the way long, she asked, and her guide said yes, and the way is hard, and you will be old before you reach the end of it, but the end will be better than the beginning. The young mother was happy. She would not believe that anything could be better than these years, so she played with her children and gathered flowers for them along the way and bathed with them in the clear streams. The sun shone on them, and life was good. The young mother cried, nothing will ever be lovelier than this. Then night came and storm, and the path was dark. The children shook with fear and, co and cold, and the mother drew them close and covered them with her, her man mantle. The children said, oh, mother, we are not afraid, for you are near, and no, no harm can come. The mother said, this is better than the brightest 
day, for I have thought, I've, for I have taught my children courage. The morning came, and there was a hill ahead. The children climbed and grew weary, and the mother was weary. But at all times, she said to the children, a little patience, and we are there. So the children climbed, and when they reached the top, they said, we could not have done it without you, mother. And the mother, when she lay down that night, looked at the stars and said, this is a better day than the last, for my children have learned fortitude in the face of hardness. Yesterday, I gave them courage. Today, I have given them strength. The next day came strange clouds, which darkened the sky, clouds of war and hate and evil. And the children groped and stumbled. The mother said, look up, lift your eyes to the light. And the children looked and saw above the clouds an everlasting glory. And it guided them and brought them beyond the darkness. That night, the mother said, this is the best day of all, for I have shown my children God. And the days went on, and the weeks, and the months, and the years. The mother grew old. She was little and bent. But her children were tall and strong and walked with courage. And when the way was hard, they helped their mother. And when the way was rough, they lifted her, for she was as light as a feather. At last they came to a hill. Beyond the hill they could see a shining road and a golden gate flung wide. The mother said, I have reached the end of my journey, and now I know that the end is better than the beginning, for my children can walk alone, and their children after them. The children said, you will always walk with us, mother, even when you have gone through the gates. They stood and watched her as she went on alone, and the gates closed after her. And she said, we, we cannot, and, and they said, we cannot see her, but she is with us still. A mother like ours is more than a memory. Her influence is a living presence.